People have heard about these new kinds of collective intelligence, things like Google and Wikipedia and Innocentive and so forth. But there aren't yet very many companies who are really taking advantage of these new possibilities. I think one reason for that is that people hear about these collective intelligence examples, they sound cool, but it seems like some sort of big amorphous mass of cool things that people don't quite know how to think about for something, as something they could actually do. What we're trying to do in this article is give you a much more sort of step-by-step -step toolbox of the pieces that are in these famous examples of collective intelligence. We call these pieces genes. They're essentially the design patterns that have been used in a certain way in these cases, but we believe can be recombined in many other ways to create very interesting new ways of using collective intelligence in lots more companies than have done so so far. But let me give you an idea about the ways we think about identifying these different genes for collective intelligence. We start by saying any activity needs to have genes to answer four key questions. What is being done? Who is doing it? Why are they doing it? And how are they doing it? For instance, in the category of how, two of the subtypes of genes we identify are collections and then an even more specialized kind of collection called contest. So a collection just means a lot of people create a lot of different things independently. For instance, YouTube is an example of a collection where many people independently create their videos and put them up on the YouTube website. But a specialized kind of collection, the one we call contest, is illustrated by Innocentive, where they let companies outsource difficult research problems or research questions to get answers from anyone who wants to contribute in a global pool of over 200,000 scientists and technologists around the world. In that case, a collection is also created, that is, for each company's problem, a collection of possible solutions to that problem are created. But here, the company that has the problem really only wants one or two solutions, so they select from among the collection of solutions people sent in the one or two that they want to reward with prizes that often are as much as $100,000 or so, and that they then get the intellectual property rights to use. A lot of people have heard stories about collective intelligence examples, and they think, well, that's the end of the story. But I don't think these early examples are the end of the story. I think they're just barely the beginning. And I think we'll see far more examples of many, many new kinds of collective intelligence mixing people, computers, and the widespread communication enabled by things like the Internet. I think we'll see more and more examples of those throughout business in the coming decades.